Hello and welcome back. This is the last in our series about hand rolling your own authentication system. So previously we had authenticated routes as well as ways to log in, but we don't have a way to register a user yet. We're going to be doing that today and we're going to be combining the stuff we've learned in the previous episodes to create something that is similar but has its own special requirements. So first we're going to create the register route and then we'll add a link to register if you're not signed in. Then we'll need a template for our new route. We'll go ahead and copy the login template since it's going to be very similar and then just change a few things so that it makes sense. This form, as well as several other things we do this episode, do repeat themselves and so are good candidates for a factor. However, we won't be tackling that this episode. So this is what that gets us. Now we need to make the register button do something. The login controller already has functionality very similar to what we need, so we'll copy it and change a few things like we did before. But here we're going to have to change a few more things. The first is that we want our validations to explicitly run before we call anything on the session. We could have done this on login, and we probably should have, but it's even more important now. So the validations are a promise, and then our session register is also a promise, so we'll go ahead and stack those promises. So we have several different promises happening here, stacked on top of each other, and they're caught by the same catch block. And this is generally good, except now we have the reason coming back, the error coming back in different formats sometimes. So we'll need to take care of that. We'll do this by checking the type, and if it's a string, something that'll look nice to the user, we'll show a flash message. Otherwise, we just take the error and assume that it's the type that is going to show up in the template already. Now obviously this won't work for all situations. You need to customize this so it's specific to what you're expecting to be returned. So now we have the register action in the register controller. Let's build the register method in the session service. Once again, we're going to copy the login and then expand on it. The changes here are fairly easy. So we name it register instead of login, and then instead of posting to the sessions route, we post to the users route. We could also post to a register route if we wanted to, if we made our server like that. Finally, we'll make changes in our error handling. So previously, there was always the same error. But now we might get back multiple errors, so we'll have to take that into account. So we'll get the response, and then we'll get the response JSON and the error from that using ember.get. Now this screencast is mostly about the JavaScript, but let's take a quick peek at our server method. So this is the createUsers method, and we'll basically be getting the email and password. If there is already a user with that email, then we'll send back an error. Otherwise, we'll create the user, save it, and then send back their authentication token and their user ID. You also note that although we usually do the authorize user action before everything, we've created an exception for the create method. So now let's see this in action. So we type a username, and of course, before it even sends off to the server, it does the validations. So let's get rid of those validations and Good, we've registered. Now we can try to register that same one again and it'll give us the server error. So this is the end of our series about how to roll your own authentication system. You can use this and you can either expand on it or you can use the knowledge you gained to help you understand Ember Simple Auth and Ember Tori, two great add-ons that are meant to help make authentication easier. Good luck and I'll see you next week.